she is all paint painted pinned so it's like you've made a little sandwich basically so you've got your interfacing your bits on the inside and your backing fabric so it is ready to take to the sewing machine and stitch it down so uh, um i'll come back and we'll start the stitching which is so much fun um i've threaded it i've just got sort of like a light beige in my bobbin and a dark olivey khaki in my top thread i have no idea what stitches i've set it for but i just did a little test piece on a bit of felt and it looked reasonably okay i am not a machine stitcher i literally i can like sew a hem and i can do this kind of stuff but i don't really know my machine that's something i really need to probably work on i've also got the free motion foot um, in my machines and i've got the feed dogs down because otherwise you can't slide the fabric around um, okay so i'll get my little piece in place and i'll be right back just i've just slid it under there um please i'm embarrassed to be showing me doing anything on a sewing machine but so it's really just a case of oh i'm gonna try not to run over the pins just a few little stitches and then it's just a matter of randomly and i know i'm doing this really badly stitching around doesn't matter the shape oh, it's hard to hold this i need those gloves which i do have somewhere but oh can you stitch my finger there so you're just gonna any old way now the purpose here is i just want it held down to start with so that i can um so that i can then take the pins out and then i can start doing some more because i like to use a few different colors um to do the top so um i'm not going to embarrass myself by videoing too much more of this at this point so i'll just do a little bit more and i'll come back to you okay all my pins are out and i've done i kind of this is almost like basting it's the first layer um it's gonna make sure nothing's moving now um and this is where you can um you can do it all the same color if you want um i like doing some different threads i'm not changing my bobbin thread because it doesn't matter and i mean the back is kind of cool too look at that really shocking tension oh look i've even got eyelashes of bad tension but you know what i don't care i go over this pretty densely um, especially if like me you like to cut these up into smaller pieces and use them in different projects or you might want to cut it into a shape um, but yeah so obviously the more dense you do the stitching the more um, well held together it's going to be so i am going to now i think i'll go for i, think I might go for like a rusty beige a bit like that wool that um, wool roving I put in. So I'm going to do a bit more stitching and then we'll come back when it's ready for the next bit. Okay, so I'm on my third thread and just wanted to mention something. Sometimes you can't see the thread. So like I've been using some light colors. All you can really see, all I can really see is that dark one that I started with. So sometimes that makes it a little tricky to know where to go. So what I do then is see where all the little, the little bubble bits Basically, I just want to go, I don't want any of those to be too big. So I'll kind of go through and just see if there's any bubbles that need flattening out because that probably means that um, they haven't quite had enough stitching yet. So I'll just show you what I mean. pretty much gone over all of that but I'm just thinking now it's probably covered enough to be really well held together but I'm not sure I like how much that one thread stands out now it won't stand out as much once we wash this um, interfacing off but I'm thinking I might just do another little squiggle over it with maybe like I've got a lot of gray in there I might do like a 
mid gray and one that I can actually see because it makes it difficult when you can't see. Okay, she's all stitched. So yeah, little bits everywhere. I don't worry about these. It's just so that? yeah, it's so like overstitched that um, you're not gonna don't don't worry about loose threads. Here's the back. Whoops, more threads. Where's my little snips? Um, you'll probably find yourself needing to do this a bit more after it's rinsed. So there we go. So the next step. And the exciting bit is washing off this stuff. So what I actually do just to make it a little bit easier and a bit quicker is I do trim that off. So I just trim it like close to the stitching because stuff can kind of go a bit gloopy. You get the idea. I'm going to snip that all around and then I'm going to take it and I'll show you how we wash it out. Okay, here's the exciting part. Let's see what we've ended up with. Um, literally, all you're going to do, sink, tap water, put it in. Oh, that's a bit of hot. I'm going to add some cold. All you need to do is just smush it around. And gone. You can feel some bits can be like a little bit slippery um, in which case you might just want to go over them a little bit oh, you're gonna lose a few threads so basically just do that a few times you can rinse it under cold now you're not gonna want to wring this out you can do a bit of a squeeze um, and then I usually roll mine up in like a little tea towel or something just to get some of the excess water out of it and then I lay it flat to dry. So I'm gonna go do that and I'll catch up when it's dry. Okay, so here we have the final piece. So as you can see, I have dried it. I ironed it. It's, it's gorgeous. Just listen to that. It's scrunchy. So let me do some close-ups. Have a look. You can see, you remember all those little elements we started with? We've got some of the wool roving, that's a bit of the sari silk ribbon. We've got the little black threads from that old shawl. We've got all our little ort threads. We've got some of the little sort of macrame bits from a thingy. We've got some more wool, but it's just, yeah. Excuse the sunshine there, it's a very bright afternoon. Um, just showing you the back. So again, it's just like, wee! It's crazy, hey? I mean, even the back's kind of cool. You could do something with that. These pieces are, I mean, seriously, you could just stick that in a frame. You could cut that up and um, put a patch on clothing. Um, that would look really cool. Um, you know, you could do so much with it. You can, there's a lovely lady on Instagram who has made these recently and she cut it into a heart and did a backy piece and stuffed it and it's a beautiful little decoration. Um, you could cut this into little strips and little circles and little anything and you could just use them in, in fabric collage. You could use them for making fabric landscapes. I mean, look at this, this would be great for like beach or a rocky area or something like um, sort of dry fields in summer with the sort of gold and beige of the hay. There really is, you can do so much. You could trim this around and you could make this into like a journal cover and it'd be beautiful. You can add some embellishments, stitching. Um, you can stitch on top of these quite easily. You can do embroidery. Could do couching. That's the limit, really.